Go on, Topaz, say it, because I've got the moon cooties. That's the kind of fight I support, lard butts. It's time to get aggressively hip, 70s style, and meet Moon Knight. Oh, sorry, the Moon Knight. Greetings, comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from music comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, really wherever our whims take us. Am I 70s enough for this video? The shirt is floral slash paisley, the hair is platinum, the glasses are round. Moon Knight it's one of those characters where you'll often hear the question, where do I start? Mark Spector has had several stops and starts. He's one of those characters who has quite the comic book history to track. And he's also changed a lot over time. So depending upon where you start, you're gonna get a pretty different iteration of Moon Knight. The 2021 series by Jed McKay does a decent job of catching you up while moving forward doing its own thing. There's gonna be more eyes on Moon Knight because time of recording, they're doing a Disney Plus series. It hasn't come out yet. At this point, maybe it's the future and you're watching it or the present. This one is gonna star Oscar Isaac as Mark. It has a trailer has been met with both excitement and really that's the costume look at those gloves what are these effects i mean you can't always have those sweet duke leto atreides gloves those gloves didn't save him anyway i'm curious as how that will go we'll see time of recording i'm low-key excited though largely because it's oscar isaac and if he can make me enjoy a movie about a man wandering around trying to catch a cat well, let's see what he can do for moon knight it's a team effort though oscar isaac can't save everything Are you fine now they fly now! And neither can copious amounts of periotypical slang slash jargon. I had to share Moon Knight's first appearance with you. Some may opt to skip it, like the first season of Buffy. But like that, I will say about this, it is interesting to see where the beginning was. See what was kept, what was changed, and also understanding some of his design. Contrary to an opinion that I've heard espouse more than one location, Moon Knight is not just Marvel's Batman. Not at all. Don't let the crescent moon battering style throwing stars fool you. I'm Sasha, and who's ready for moon cooties? Moon Knight first debuted in Werewolf by Night number 32 in 1975, with trade by Doug Muntz and Don Perlin. He was specifically designed to be dangerous to the title character, Jack Russell. The Werewolf by Night is called Jack Russell. Jack Russell, Werewolf. Jerry Conway, who was on the initial creative team, reviving Werewolf by Night, which had had a short story of the same name in 1954, back when Marvel was Atlas, that story had a fair three differences though, and vanished with the coming of the Comics Code. Conway claimed the name was accidental in an interview with Back Issue in 2014. He stated, it's entirely possible that when I wrote the script and I wrote the character's name that I was subconsciously making that association. I'm pretty sure I would never have thought of it. I didn't own a dog. I wasn't raised with dogs. And the idea of calling a character Jack Russell, who turns into a werewolf, probably would have struck me as hilarious if I had thought of it, but I don't think I did. Jack Russell's appearance in the early 70s is a result of the loosening of the comics code, this surrounding the ban on supernatural creatures, which by 1975, when this issue comes to us, had not loosened enough for us to say the word zombies. So get ready for Zuvembies. There's a subplot about Zuvembies. Moon Knight's costume is is steeped in silver, as you'll see in the story. And also he is styled after the moon because it's supposed to be unsettling to Jack. There's a line in there about how the moon is meant to strengthen him, not weaken him. There are a lot of great lines in this. Hold on, let me say something that'll age as poorly as some of them have. There's lots of banger lines in this. The line slap. Can even a werewolf battle a man clad in solid silver and survive? That's oddly phrased. I mean, he would have a harder time because he's a werewolf. The harder you fight, the quicker you die. Moon Knight wishes. Jack Russell's more like the Hulk in this. The more he fights, the angrier he gets. The tag's Russell with a jack in front of it. The kind of name that fits a normal 19-year-old dude living out in LA. Not the kind of name you'd expect to find slapped, sprouting fangs, poor to poor fur. Actually, it's exactly the type of name I'd expect for that. Jack is cool, by the way. He's a cool dude. So Jack inherited his werewolfism from his dad, from a curse from the book called The Dark Hold. So they're still skirting around pseudo-werewolf territory, because when Jack was created, it was 1972, and the code had just been revised in 1971, so some were still playing it a little bit safe. Also, the fact that he's a cursed werewolf is why he was so involved in that cap wolf storyline. Yeah, at the end there, that was Jack Russell. I didn't highlight that enough in that review because I didn't know enough about Jack Russell at the time and I'm very sad. I feel like I need to go back and be like the Jack Russell edition. Tough I usually hate, but when the full moon pokes its ugly puss into my life, I turn into the werewolf. Oh. Yes, puss means face. It's less awkwardly employed here than it has been when we've seen it in past occurrences. Batgirl, it's been a long time since I saw your pretty puss. Moon Knight's cape used to be in strips, just like the moon. M-O-O-N, that spells holes in your cape. Get up, you mean, you freak. Get up so I can knock you down again. Now the narration by Jack is gonna switch between first and third person a lot. And it took me a minute to figure out why, because it doesn't do it consistently once you figure out what the rules seem to be. At the start, it seems to be because he views himself as separate from the werewolf, the beast. So he'll refer to himself, Jack, as I, and then the werewolf in the third person. The werewolf did this, he did that. The only thing is it doesn't always happen that way, and sometimes he'll just use I for both. Also, the narration boxes keep changing color, and so in your mind, you're cueing yourself 
myself up to think, oh, maybe it's changing for the different perspectives. No, it's just changing color because colors are cool. It actually happens right away in the opening few pages. Even if his voice hadn't been muffled by a mask, the words still would have been Greek to a werewolf. But it was the tone of this Moon Knight's voice that enraged me. This gets even more murky because it's later on stated that he can't remember what happens as the werewolf. So how does he know that that's what made him or them mad? Doesn't matter. Look at Moon Knight. He has a cestus. Gloves with silver spikes. Their gladiatorial weapon? Yeah, Moon Knight doesn't have his Egypt backstory yet. Also, the core root word of that word means to strike. So you know you gotta get some good blows in. I hit the filthy alley like an oak felt by silver lightning. The metaphors need work, Jack. But the lightning won't quit. Oh, I hate cowards who run. He was attacking you. But even more, I hate cowards who fight only when cornered. It was called a savat kick. So he has Roman gladiatorial gloves, but he's a French boxer. I'll go with it. I'm hip, but what's that other dude? Like Lon Chaney and a mink? Would a Lon Chaney reference be relevant in 1975? I'm honestly asking. Also, shouldn't it be Lon Chaney Jr.? Lon Chaney Sr. played Phantom of the Opera, but his son, who was initially named Creighton and then changed his name to Lon Chaney Jr., he played the Wolfman. I guess the extra is not as hip as he thinks he is. And nor am I. I am a big nerd. Anyway, Moon Knight is throwing his crescent thing. The werewolf howled. It wasn't right. The moon was supposed to give him strength, fill him with savagery, not stab him with glaring pain. Oh, the humanity. Wait, no. Oh, the lycanthropy. Jack may be down and passing out, but you're never fading too fast for a flashback. We need to see how we got to this point. So we get a recap of a bit of the last issue and also how we got to where we are. Jack was on a trip when he transformed, almost taking out a seven-year-old girl named Buttons. Yes, Buttons. But his best friend, Buck Cohen, stopped him, but got horribly mauled, shielding the girl's body. Jack wanders off and transforms back into a human. He remembers nothing, but he does remember where he stashed his clothes. So he goes and gets his clothes and then waits for Buck, who's supposed to pick him up. So we get some dramatic intercutting between the two. Buck being rushed to surgery with all of those lines. We need blood, stat, nurse, get paddles, things like that. And then we have Jack standing in the snow waiting, thinking he's been forgotten. He said he was leaving the ski lodge where they were the previous evening, so he feels he can't go back. That would be suspicious. And it's the 70s, so he just hitchhikes. He won't be doing that after 1986. And then he gets picked up by 70s political commentary. Energy, I tell that's where all your money's hiding these days while the Texans and the Arabs are rolling in the green while the rest of us poor slobs feel the crunch. Sure is a nice day though, ain't it? What's the matter, kid? Some cat got a taste for your tongue? I'm a werewolf. Ooh. The 1970s was an era of politically overt attempts at social and political commentary. All of the eras do it to varying degrees, but some are a bit more aggressive with it. The 70s is one of those eras. Not all comics, but the ones that dove in tended to go hard, and it could get clumsy as a result. Never Never forget Black Lois Lane. Look me straight in the eye and tell me the truth. Do you love me? Suppose I couldn't change back. Would you marry me? Even if I'm a black outsider in a white man's world. Lois, I told you the same thing when you dyed your hair red and blonde. I have a restraining order. A lot of it has aged like milk or can be quite jarring. The white eyes swiped our land, broke treaties, herded us like animals onto reservations. Now the big bellies in the capital are talking about taking away our fishing rights. Next they'll want the marrow from our bones. I guess you have to learn the things I'm ashamed of about my race. The next issue, my red skin brothers find you guilty and I am your executioner. Heard from like heroes? A similar spirit exists today, time of recording, where more overt statements are being conveyed. Now this poor aging doesn't necessarily happen because the issues being discussed aren't relevant, but rather because they're clumsily handled. And when the issue is current, the context of the era often has people give it more leeway or have more understanding for the references or for those who agree with what is being expressed be more open to explaining the perceived intent. And while some of the statements may hold true, it comes across better and makes more of an impact if it's well handled. It also then lasts for longer than the moment, or also has the potential to be absorbed by people with different viewpoints, which assumedly is part of the goal. It may not be. I don't know what people are thinking. A woo. The thing is, decades later, when you come back to these works, which many fans do, when removed from context or recontextualized or just viewed through the lens of the new era or by new fans who are just coming to it, few of these stand up to scrutiny, but they do provide excellent time capsules to both right styles and attitudes, and to see how messages were being conveyed, who was conveying them, why were they being placed where they were placed, things like that. And of course, then there are those beautiful rare exceptions. Mwah. This panel feels like one of those we need to put commentary in because everyone else is doing it kind of occurrences, which maybe felt more in place at the time, and the way it's handled for some of the ways it's being conveyed at the time of recording, this could actually pass as subtle. The thing is, lots of the rest of the book would not pass muster if regarded through a modern lens. It's interesting seeing how things age and how things are implemented. Jack Russell is a hip 19 
18-year-old after all. The panels of Buck getting surgery are right out of a parody medical show, but they also make it seem like Buck died for extra drama. Jack gets home and hears the news about it from his stepfather. It's really sad, and even if it's a bit melodramatic, Jack essentially says that if Buck is dead, he's going to kill himself. He has a lot of trauma about being a werewolf. The thing is, Jack doesn't want to hurt anybody. He doesn't want to let the fact that he's a werewolf turn him into a monster. Buck is in a coma. And Jack's girlfriend, Topaz, feels like it wouldn't be a great idea for his sister to stay with him given everything going on. And so she says that she can stay with her. Jack takes it well. Go on, Topaz, say it. Because I've got the moon cooties. Moon cooties is now my new favorite saying. I can't go out tonight. I got the moon cooties. This is actually the quote they use on the Marvel database page when you look up this issue. It's fantastic. Oh, in the car. I felt ashamed. You see, Jack may be very of his time, but he also has some endearing moments, such as he knows when he's going too far or behaving badly or not being mature, and he tries to do better and even apologize. It makes you kind of feel for him through all of the hipness. Jack goes home and Moon Knight is just there, waiting for him in his living room. He's not sitting on any of his chairs though, so minus 10 points. Hello, Russell. They told me to introduce myself as the Moon Knight. Who are you besides a Lunar Crusader rabbit? Rabbit? How? Why? What? What rabbits are you looking at? His voice was muffled under the silver gauze which covered its face like ectoplasm. That was something else I didn't like. I hear ya. I don't like ectoplasm either. Moon Knight then tells him everything. He was hired by the committee to take him out. Well, actually, to take him and bring him to them alive. The committee were a group of villains who wanted to stimulate the world as they viewed its sinking economy. And they actually ended up transitioning over to being more Moon Knight's problem than Jack and his family's. Moon Knight has a backstory here where he's basically just done everything. Soldier of fortune, mercenary, veteran of three African wars, five South American revolutions, brief flirtation with the CIA. I guess they didn't take him to a nice enough restaurant. It goes on, and I like to imagine it's an actual resume, maybe one of those newfangled ones that the kids are using where they have little scales and graphs that indicate how good they are at certain skills, so they're filled to the amount of how good they think they are. Some even use emojis. I want some Moon Knight emojis. I know it's not, because Mark says that their research department is hot stuff, but I can dream. His mission, should he choose to accept it, is to don the costume that they give him and go and hunt down Jack Russell, werewolf, all of this for $10,000, so 50000 roughly. Inflation. Moon Knight doesn't believe in werewolves, but he does believe in $10,000. Of course, Jack is transforming, always at the most dramatic times. So I guess, yeah, Moon Knight was right. He was running. But I mean, what was he supposed to do? Just stand there and fight in the house? Not everyone's getting $10,000 to replace their furniture, Mark. Someone decides to call the police, you know, finally after watching this fight for a while. I'm going to skip over the Zuvambi subplot. Not because it's not interesting, but just because it doesn't pertain to anything going on with Moon Knight. It's purely being set up as a B-plot that's gonna take over. All you need to know is, hey, stereotypical voodoo and Zuvembis. The word also has an interesting history. Maybe we should talk about it. Also, fear not, the stereotypical Haitian accent is just a sign that everybody who is from somewhere else is going to be written in that manner with as stereotypical and exaggerated an accent as possible. I will now do a ridiculous French accent for Frenchie. Because Frenchie's gonna kidnap Jack's sister and Topaz. Her name is Lisa or Lisa. Lissa? I never know how to say it, so I just don't. Good evening, mademoiselles. The name is Frenchy. I must know which of you is Jack's charming sister. So French, en français. <laughs> Moon Knight and the werewolf are still fighting, but all the silver finally overwhelms Jack and he goes down. And Moon Knight drags him to the helicopter. Frenchy flew over there with the girls. It was coordinated, I guess. Next issue. He has two parts. Two glorious parts of Moon Knight. On this cover, the werewolf really does look Wolfman-esque. Aw, Moon Knight looks comfy on that ladder. Wee. Moon Knight gets shot by the cops who just showed up, but it doesn't matter. It just happens, but then it makes no impact on anything. But yeah, he got shot. Just telling you. He's not too hurt to yell at Werewolf Jack when he revives and tries to escape. But the werewolf didn't care. He was mad. So mad that he'd even forgotten about his broken hand. Oh yeah, I also forgot about Jack's broken hand. He broke his hand when he punched a wall when he heard that Buck was in a coma. It didn't really matter until now. They just kept mentioning it so that you know that Jack is hurt, but it doesn't impact anything he can do. But he's hurt. The werewolf is big mad and he wants revenge on Moon Knight. Crazy fur coat with fangs. Huh, a werewolf skin coat. Would it also transform back? And would you just end up with a skin coat? Like a serial killer? The memory made him mad. We hit the Pacific for a second time. Pick a tense or at least be consistent about when you're changing them. Hold it, mean puss. I ain't heard no count of ten yet. Apparently this has taken all night because just as Jack starts to win, the dawn steals his victory and he transforms back into a human. All the injuries he sustained, they transfer over and he passes out. I don't believe it. So what do you think? It was a costume? Some random werewolf? You didn't care, did you, Mark? $10,000. I brought you your pigeon. Now where's my bread? Can't go on. 
do it. You seem to be taking that costume rather seriously. Aren't you? You put enough silver on it. Enough of that. He needs to be creepy to the ladies. They're both there because the committee just wants Jack's sister, who is also destined to become a werewolf when she hits 18. But they don't know who she is, so Frenzy just grabbed both. Jack wakes up and he's dazed and confused. He doesn't remember anything, so don't ask how he can do that dramatic narration, even though I'm asking it. I ask it all the time. Shh, doesn't matter. Ooh, werewolf. Topaz and Lysa. Tied up like... Like prisoners, Mr. Russell. Yes, prisoners. Oh, he's been out all day apparently because it's three minutes till the full moon. He's about to transform again. They want a werewolf so they can unleash him places and then he'll kill the people in those places. That seems not very convenient and like it could go very wrong. Why not just hire Mark or someone cheaper? Although I think Mark proved that he's worth the price. You take the sleaze cake, you know that? No, sleaze takes the sleaze cake. And you... Crusader rabbit. Again, with a rabbit, what? Are you in the habit of getting paid for slamming people in cages? I mean, probably. He transforms, but now Mark has guilt. He's a conflicted rabbit, so it just takes one of these to turn the tide. Go ahead, take your dirty blood money. I hope you're proud of yourself. Oh man, now the money feels bad. A beast who fights only to be free. And that's the kind of fight I support, lard butts. Well, he's not getting a good LinkedIn recommendation. So he kicks open the cage and the werewolf is free. When he goes for Moon Knight, he ducks. So the werewolf rounds on the council. Moon Knight frees the ladies and they get out of there. Moon Knight has some very funny fight poses, this issue. So a lot of people got mauled by a werewolf. It's almost like capturing one for something so unplanned and vague was a terrible idea. Moon Knight escapes before the wolf can get him and he keeps the money and the costume because he's in the pro costume camp. He likes it. He'll be back, sort of, and it's 37 as a vision. So yes, that was Moon Knight's first appearance. Len Wein, who was the editor at the time, would decide that he did like the character and wanted to do more with him. So they fleshed him out. They took the K off his name and put a C on there instead. And he would get a Marvel spotlight in 1976. And he'd be reimagined as more of an anti-hero, less hired gun, rather hired moon crescent throwing star guy. His later appearances would also see the costume change. When Bill Sienkiewicz was drawing him, he took on a more Batman look because he was inspired by Neil Adams. So that's where some of those appearance comparisons start to come in. He doesn't get multiple personalities added to him until his miniseries from 1985. Moon Knight is a journey. A journey with an amusing beginning. Now, if you can get past the intensely hip dialogue, this issue's okay. Moon Knight feels like a threat and his look lands. Mileage varies. I'm in the it's a look category. Moon Belt for the win. The battle scenes are cool and the melodrama is on par for how it goes in World by Night. The narration, if you can flow between the tenses, is interesting. Provides you with a lot of insight into Jack and the werewolf. And they do feel separate. It's just confusedly handled for much of it. It could have been a lot smoother. Even a line about Jack remembering fragments would go a huge way towards suspending disbelief as to how everything's being narrated. It's a little thing, but it could help the experience for those who need that little bit extra for immersion. Some aren't gonna mind, some it's gonna break it for them. Now Moon Knight, while feeling like a threat to Jack, does not really feel like a character yet. His face heel turn is abrupt as heck, and him just being in Jack's house without him seemingly having threatened his dad is pretty funny to imagine. He just opens the door, sees someone dressed like that, Come on in, I love rabbits. Why did he keep calling him a rabbit? Please, if you understand that reference, tell me. I like understanding things. I can see why people liked Werewolf by Night after reading these. Such drama. Friend in a coma by his own hand. Zuvembi subplot. Overqualified mercs out to get him. Girlfriend and sister drama, plus totally hip slang. He is a cool dude, sprouting fur, pore to pore. This one is pretty flawed overall. And a lot of the amusement I got out of it was because of the dialogue or the colloquialisms or just how over the top soap opera it was at points, he broke his hand punching a wall. But it was interesting to see where Moon Knight first debuted and to see what was kept and what was changed. Kept the costume mostly, his name mostly, some of that backstory. Despite the flaws, this was a fun read and it certainly wasn't boring at any point. I wonder if Jack will ever have a comeback. Not that he's entirely vanished. He even showed up in Ultimate Spider-Man. I heard a rumor and by that I mean I read online that there may be a series in development, which as always, trust nothing until it's in your hands. And also Disney Plus doing werewolves. I don't know. I can hope, but I like a pretty gory werewolf transformation just personally. Something American werewolf in London. Or something where like the human part has to claw its way out of the wolf part, like Hemlock Grove. But we'll see, you never know. On the other hand, it would just be interesting to see how Jack Russell is handled in the modern era. I wanna see how he talks. Let's have him talk like that, but with slang from the time of the recording. But these are just my opinions and I wanna hear yours. Did you like these issues? Are you a Moon Knight fan? Are you a Jack Russell fan? What's your favorite era for Moon Knight? Do you have a bad case? of the moon cooties. Share your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time of your day to spend discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.